Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and if you watched my first video called I Begin My Journey Into Watchmaking, then you'll remember where I mentioned the watchmaker who I was learning from recommended getting a Unitas 6497 or 6498 movement so I could follow along with and practice taking it apart and putting it back together. Well on today's video I'm going to show you that movement, disassemble it, name all the parts, and even give you a little history of the movement and the watch company who invented it. Unitas was a Swiss watchmaking company that was established in 1898 and is currently a part of the Swatch Group's ETA division. The company originally released both the 6497 and 6498 movements in the 1950s and they were initially used in pocket watches. The difference between the two movements is the position of the seconds hand. In the 6497, the seconds would appear in the 6 o'clock position on a standard open face movement with the winding stem at the top above the 12. The 6498 was used in a pocket watch that came in a hunting case so that the second style would still appear at 6 o'clock when opened sideways. Incidentally, when a hunting movement appears in a regular open faced case, it's called a sidewinder. So the first thing I need to do is release the tension in the mainspring. And I'll do that by holding the click back with a piece of peg wood and slowly releasing the tension by holding on to the winding stem. And we'll just wait for the balance wheel to stop moving. Then we'll flip the movement over. And uh, I really don't like this movement holder. I think I'm going to have to get another one. It's just a little, I don't know. It, I got the cheap one, and maybe it's just a little too cheap. <laughs> So next I'll remove the minute hand and I'll be using some hand remover levers and I'll put a little piece of plastic over the movement. Now if there was a dial there this would just protect the dial. And you'll notice that there's only a minute hand on this movement. It did not come with an hour hand. And we'll just re uh, remove the uh, I just noticed that the cannon pinion came off with the hour hand, or excuse me, the minute hand. So with the uh, cannon pinion already removed, I'll flip the movement back over. So the very first thing uh, we need to do is to remove the balance wheel and the balance wheel bridge. They are attached to each other. And the reason for this is the balance wheel by far is the most delicate part of this watch or any watch. So it's great to get it out of the way first just to protect it. And you will see when I get it out that the little spring on the balance wheel. It's called the hair spring. It will just uh, bounce all over the place. And that is the balance wheel and the balance bridge. There we go. Now you can see it moving back and forth. Next, we need to remove the pallet fork bridge. Incidentally, when the balance fork is held in place with a bridge that only has one screw, that's called a cock.
Now I'm placing these all on the table in such a way that they will um, stay together yet you'll be able to see all the pieces and their corresponding sprues. This is the ever so delicate palette fork. And with that out, I feel a great sigh of relief. Oof. Next, we will remove the ratchet wheel. And these are two of the largest screws on the movement. The ratchet wheel uh, holds the, or transfers the power from the winding stem down to the barrel bridge. Now this screw right here uh, on the crown wheel, it is most often a reverse threaded screw. Yeah, and so as you notice, I'm actually turning clockwise to loosen the screw. That is always something to take note of. And you, you think that those screws are the same, but they are not. So you really need to keep them separate because of the reverse threading. And that was the crown wheel. And this is the crown wheel ring. And now I'll remove the click and the click spring. The click is what keeps the ratchet wheel from just releasing all the power when you wind it. And it looks to be stuck. I don't, I must have got the, there we go. I think I got the uh, the tweezers stuck in the slot of the screw. And this is the click. And very tiny, oh, very tiny uh, click spring. And oh, oh no, where did it go? Oh no. Ah, there it is. Crisis averted. Whew. I'll remove the barrel bridge next. It's held in place with three screws. And you'll notice in the center there's a jewel there. And that is um, for the center wheel. And there's a little pivot that goes through that jewel. So I need to be very careful when I loosen this plate as to not bend that pivot. So I want to try to lift straight up when I get these screws out. One nice thing about the 6498 movement is that all three of these screws are the same size. That's not always the case. Whoops. This is a slippery little screw head. Admittedly, I am still trying to learn how to um, get these screws out and use these little tiny screwdrivers, so that kind of stuff happens from time to time. Uh, looks like I did not Get this one all the way loose. And I still did not get it all the way loose. Maybe that'll do it. Success. There are small notches 
uh, on the side of the bridge into which you can place your screwdriver. And carefully lift. There we go. And once the barrel bridge is removed, and you can see the barrel. And the center wheel. Next we or I will remove the train wheel bridge which covers the majority of the train of wheels which I think is the most beautiful part of a watch movement now this bridge is held in place by two screws and another nice thing is they are um, identical to the barrel bridge screws. And again, there's slots on the side of the plate between the bridge and the uh, base plate. And those three jewels on top capture the pivots of the wheels underneath. And there we can see the train of wheels. Firstly, I'll remove the center wheel. And you can see that long pivot. That is what sticks through the base plate and you attach your uh, minute hand to. This is the third wheel. And next is the fourth wheel, which is also incidentally called the second wheel. Seconds wheel, because that long pivot that you see there, that's what the second hand or second hand is attached to. And next is the escape wheel. And that was part of the escapement with the uh, pallet fork and the balance wheel. And we also remove the barrel, which contains the mainspring or the power source for the watch. So I'll flip the movement over and we'll get to the other side. And we will remove the keyless works. Now this is the setting lever spring. And it um, provides the resistance for the setting lever whenever you pull it out to set the time and you have it pushed in to wind. And it also has a slippery little screw slot on the top. Come back here. And, uh, okay, there we go. Now this spring is under tension, so I like to use a little piece of pegwood to hold it down while I um, release it from its little peg right here. And then it will come right out.
next is the yoke and the yoke spring. And again, I'll use this piece of pegwood to hold down the spring so when I release the tension on it, it does not go flying. And thank goodness it did not. Next is the yoke. And next is the minute wheel. And then there are two intermediate wheels, and those assist in the um, setting of the time. And those are happily the same, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Sometimes they'll have a bevel on them. These do not. But when they do have a bevel, you need to uh, note the orientation of that, um, of those wheels and of the bevel. And next I'm going to release the setting lever screw. And that will allow the setting lever to fall to the bench top. So in order to get to that screw, you've got to flip the movement over again. And it's a teeny tiny little screw right there, right next to the setting lever. And this is the setting lever. And I'll flip it over again. And I will remove the setting lever, or um, the uh, stem, the winding stem. And with that, the sliding clutch falls out, along with the winding pinion. This is what uh, the winding pinion, this is what allows the uh, stem to wind the mainspring in one direction, but in the other direction, it does not. Um, and this is the sliding clutch, which helps to um, switch between the winding position of the stem and the watch setting position, the time setting. And with that removed, the entirety of the movement is disassembled. And we are left with only the base plate, which contains the jewels. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative, or at the very least entertaining. I really appreciate you being here. If you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. That way you'll be updated whenever new videos are posted. I really would appreciate it. Well, all right, that's it for today. Thanks again for being here and checking me out. So until the next time we're here together, be safe and God bless.